Good evening, all. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 246. And tonight, we will have the pleasure of having Guru Sean Zerger. And tonight, also helping me, will be co-host uh, <clears throat> Martin. And this is going to be kind of exciting because this is going to be a first. Um, so this is going to be a first time that we've uh, done an episode together and all that. So definitely looking forward to that. And uh, pretty soon, Sean will be joining us. But just some news, uh, like that we said we would be giving you guys. Um, <clears throat> today is Maestro Alvin Albano's birthday. So if you have not seen that already, by all means, extend him a happy birthday. And uh, Martin, are you there? Yes, sir. Because I'm not seeing you in the... I see your windows here, but I'm not seeing you. Really? Can you hear me? Yeah, you, you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing you perfectly. Yeah. Okay, I see you in the uh, in the chat. Yeah. I'm not, that's weird. Yeah, check. you're definitely here. I'm just um, like, for instance, I'm seeing your um, looks like a couch or something. <laughs> really? <laughs> we see. Huh? Oh, that's funny. They're saying they see you. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, I see myself on live with my phone. Yeah, they're saying you see it too, so it's obviously something going on with me, which, again, um, <laughs> never never ceases to amaze me. Uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna hide you for, I just wanna see something, just see if this, there was a glitch maybe if I pull you back up. Wow, I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, I, huh, that's, uh, no, we're waiting for our guest, Audi. He's uh, coming in, hopefully, uh, he should be joining us shortly. He just had he just ran a class, so we're just going to give him a few minutes uh, and all that. So we'll be uh, jumping in there. Um, but uh, to be time, <clears throat> what we got going on while we're waiting for him is, uh, as you guys can see, we got a new intro. We're going to be uh, relaying some news. Um, also, Friday kicks off the KI. We're going to be doing a string of them on Fridays. So, yeah. So, if you guys are around and to check that out, that's going to be probably this Friday at 8 o'clock, uh, I believe. So, this Friday. KI episode, theme episode, number one. Um, so, um, yeah. Can you can you oh, see my. me now, Dean? No, but it's okay. As that's long so as, weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I know. I know. It's, uh, but we're going to bring Sean up now. So he is here. Um, so I'm going to drop. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Let's get him in here. Restart schools. That's just. Uh, we're going All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good night. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Welcome, folks. We have here Guru Sean. Hey. Where are we on now? Oh, we are on. <laughs> Great. You think I look funny? Because that's John. No, I think you look great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, in that case, just stay in front of the camera, John. There oh, go. Thanks. Yeah. So I think you look good. Is that yeah, funny? that's it. Nice. So. Yes. <laughs> you guys uh, You guys look beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so you wanted to email them something? Or yeah, do you, you can send them that list. Okay, so... Um, or you can send it to me and I'll send it to them. Well, I'm not set up that way. I'm here. I need an email address to send it to, just send it no, to you. No, Martin, I'm going to actually just have you come back in. There's something okay. going on. Yeah. So Use the same link. You can email okay. it. That's not, yeah. All right, we just, um, we're ready, you know, so you guys get settled in. We, we you know, we introduced uh, that you're coming on episode 246. Okay. Guru Sean Zerger. Uh, we're going to jump into things. We're going to get into, uh, we're going to recap just a little bit when he was first on, on episode 183. So if you folks have not seen that, I would definitely check that out. That was a great episode uh, with Guru Sean. Uh, that was more on his whole bio. This one here, we're going to dive a little deeper into uh, his new school. Russian house and all that. So, but again, if you would like to go see his first episode, you can find it on our YouTube channel. If I made discussion of, again, episode 183. Hey, all right. So how, 
We're just trying to send you the list of uh, all the instructors that come to the uh, event. So okay. what, 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 what did you want to start with? Let's start with basically, if you don't mind, just for the folks that might not have seen, a quick recap just on your FMA journey. Wow. Okay. Um, so let's see. In uh, 1990, I met uh, Makoto Kabayama and uh, started studying uh, JKD. It was more the Vunak line. Um, and uh, it was more the Vunak line of uh, Jeet Kune Do, but it was, it was already JKD, FMA, and CLAT. Um, and of course, um, learned a ton of that stuff through Guru Dan, through Makoto. Um, there was a number of uh, Filipino um, gurus here in Toronto uh, that that we had some exposure to. Um, and then, of course, going to Guru Dan's, meeting some of the instructors that he would introduce, uh, and finally finding myself interested in Dog Brothers and going through that entire cadre. Uh, and uh and of course uh philip jelena here in in canada um and then getting out to to each of the gatherings uh in in europe the united states and canada um i got to work with uh senior dog brothers guys that have been fighting a long time uh i'm thinking about pappy dog poi um uh, and there are some others that I should be mentioning right off the top of my head. And then in Europe, Benjamin Rittner. Uh, and uh, so there was a lot of FMA uh, before I started my CLAT run. Because because I, I kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, Dog Brothers is, is really, really cool. But everybody's looking at the same sort of material. And then I was like, I want to look at something a little different and add CLAT mm -hmm. to my game. Um, so I went on this, this eight year journey in CLAT, uh, looked at a bunch of different instructors and then, um, saw an opportunity to go to Russia house in the Philippines and got introduced to all the, the grandmasters and the masters, uh, that attend that program or that, uh, camp. So, and of course that's also where I met GM Maka Pagal and got into KI, which is, you know, my new uh, passion project, I suppose. So. No, that's great. No, I think that was, thank you for doing that. That was perfect. And again, just for maybe perhaps the folks that just didn't catch your first one and all that. Um, but thank you for doing that. So uh, Martin, awesome. And uh, folks, this is the first time that me and Martin, we've been in FMA discussion now for like working together over a year, but this is the first episode that me and you were doing together so that's that's cool um, yeah it's pretty cool pretty neat yeah definitely you know hey sean um, hey how's it going good is it uh, as cold <laughs> as here in your place or um i guess not because i've had the doors open all night um uh, cool i don't know if you can shut that other one if it's killing you but i i trained outdoors all winter last winter so i don't notice it anymore I, I have these doors wide open and, and I've been continuing to train through uh, our latest lockdown um, because it's open air. So um, outdoor training, as far as I know, is still allowed. So been training. It's, uh, and, you know, I was training tonight <laughs> barefoot and it, it's good. I might have to change that partway through the interview, though, now that I'm not moving. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Here it's getting cold, man, and there's supposed yeah. to be another so snowstorm tomorrow, so we'll see. Anyways, uh, man, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I feel for you guys, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. breaking your heart. Like, no, no, no. Seriously, I, I mean so it, man. When I see you guys getting that much snow, and you gotta like somebody, somebody messaged me from Canada. Somebody I, I sent something to. Oh, uh, James Lynn, really nice guy. Oh, yeah. And he goes, uh, yeah, you know, my wife parked too close before I can get the snowblower out. I, I was out there four hours digging. And I'm just thinking like, oh, man, that's, <laughs> man, that's not fun, man. <laughs> that's just, so we're going to, so you, you, 
changed. Um, you got a new place and all that. And so Martin, you know, had a, a I thought a couple of great questions around that. And I'm gonna let Martin ask you as far as the new the new school. Yeah, well, actually, it, the, this whole episode was a suggestion from uh, my coach and good friend Sebastien Poirier, who's watching the episode right now. Woof woof, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so in part to promote your new school i mean so how, how is your new school what's the mission of your new school what does your clientele look like which styles do you teach the floor is yours man oh well my new school well you know i i guess to talk about the new school i kind of have to go back to the the beginning of the lockdowns and uh i i looked at what we were being offered and what we were being offered was debt. And uh, I talked to my landlord and I was like, look, we've just sent all of our students home. We're not going to be making money. What do we do? And the answer was, you got to pay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So I can, I can take on 40 grand of debt, give it to my landlord, and then be in debt. And we still won't be out of this thing because I mean, that's not, that's not a lot of money. Uh, and so I was just like, no, no, we're going to close and we'll reopen. So I always used to look at my school as being my research and development group. And I never really looked at my students as, as being like just my students. They were, they were people that I was developing to be my peers, people that I was developing to test the new information coming through the doors, um, people that could um, look at how we evolved over the years. And, you know, my intention was always that we would record and document the process. So more like a laboratory and mindset. Yeah, because I was... Uh, and at heart, I think um, I've been a JKD guy exclusively up until very, very recently. <laughs> and I'm still a JKD guy, don't get me wrong, but I, I've, I've started into some things that are op almost opposed. So I've had to partition my journey now. Um, but um, my JKD journey has been all about assimilating all these different martial arts. And... Uh, I've always been very concerned about keeping the partitions very clear about who gave me what, where did it come from, which teacher gave it to me, what system did it come from, uh, and keeping those things separate. Uh, and, and this is what I present to my students. And, and this is another reason why I call them my R&D team, because they accept the fact that I don't present a consistent, um, a consistent curriculum that's testable. Well, I, actually, that's not true. I do because <laughs> I've got it recorded and I've got the testable component all written out. Um, but my in-class material depends on what I'm studying and um, on the moment yeah yeah and my students accept this like it's not a problem for them that you know for the last eight years i've i've had six hours of CLAT in the curriculum i've also had six hours of fma and six hours of jkd in in the time in that time and i've also had separate uh fight coaching classes and a separate self-defense class because martial arts isn't self-defense and vice versa um so the you know the but the amazing thing about my student body is is they're developing with me and they're transitioning with me um and so depending on what years a student was with me they will have gotten a very different overview because i'm always in taking new information while practicing the base information so they're really part, your students are really part of your journey and of your evolution. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so this place kind of throws that on its ear a bit because we had 
you know, I had eight guys that were instructor level that I could call upon at any point to just jump in and, and teach with me, uh, for me or with me. And, uh, and of course with the pandemic, I, I have, people have moved out of the city because the city stops being the city during the pandemic. Um, I've had, uh, you know, people just move. One of my students, every time he had time off for 10 years, he was at a seminar with me for 10 years. Right, Colin, thank you. Uh, it, you know, it's amazing to have someone who's there with you all the time, you know, and he sees you going out and like getting excited about new stuff. And he's like, you already know that. And I'm like, yeah, but this is slightly different. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and I have a, a cadre of people that are really, really um, top notch instructors, but right now, and I've seen this with, with my other friends who own schools, uh, where their top guys are like, yeah, I'm going to wait until things get back to normal. Um, but, you know, there's not that many people that are opening their gyms right now and going, yeah, back to it. Um, so so it's it's kind of neat. So I think my, my goals right now remain the same. I'm still on my journey. Um, but modifying for for reality um my goal at the moment is to take the people that i have now because i still have a fair amount of my cadre they just don't necessarily want to teach and and they're here in training and uh, i want to generate one more generation of instructors and publish my work that's what mm. i'm doing. Awesome, man. That's a that's a fantastic goal. I mean, wow, and just to make them so inclusive in your journey, that's 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 really neat, refreshing to hear. I just want to take a oh, we got some folks jumping in. I just wanted to acknowledge some of the folks are saying hi. GM Bobby Tabata. Hey, hi, <laughs> Dina. Uh, we got Robert Small. Hi, Bobby. We got Darcy. We're gonna be getting him back on here. He's gonna be doing an outdoor live session slash <laughs> Martin, I don't know. but it'll be interesting and we got sebastian jonathan pang jonathan sebastian Jack, brian we got all right part of fma we got chad are you coming to florida yes it looks yes chad and i will be definitely sending you a message my apologies paulo the man we got uh audie terry from there Terry Stockton, Dan from Pennsylvania, all right, and Eric O'Brien. All right, folks, yes, if you're watching, please tell us where you're watching from and smash that like button. Um, so just, just to uh, segue, you know, what uh, Mark was asking you, and you, and you probably were going to get to it, uh, as far as the sty like, styles that you're currently teaching, um, where are those, and are they different when you from the kids? What styles am I currently teaching and is it different from my kids' class? Correct. Um, so broad in broad strokes, Jeet Kune Do, Filipino martial arts and Sea Um So that said, there, there is a lot of Muay Thai in my JKD. Um, and well, there's just a whole lot of Innocento blend and Bunak in my JKD. Um, and Makoto Kabiyama, of course, um, is really central to, to that system. And in my Silat, like I started out with the Mafalindo and the Majapayat, um, but I've added several systems over the last eight years. And um, I'm generally, because I'm now looking at publishing my own work, I'm generally referring to that work now as Northern Silat. And um, then there's, um, the FMA, which um, is, I'm he I'm heavily Innocento blend uh, by nature, and then Dog Brothers to augment that and um, and expand on it. But the KI and working with steel is affecting everything I do, and it's. It's really hard for me now. I can still present 
my material the way that I learned it. Um, mm. But it's very difficult for me to drop what I'm doing in KI out of my movement. So even if I don't say it, someone who's watching could see it. <laughs> so That's it's so not it's not part of it, right? It's not part of the way you, you do your Filipino martial arts. You cannot like dissociate from it. So it's like this. Um, uh, yes, first of all, just like a, a straight up yes. I can't disassociate from it. But um, so much of what I learned up until I, I went to the Philippines and uh, met Gian Makapagal was methods for exploration and discovery and I went to the Dog Brothers to pressure test it and to see whether or not the way that I was training was effective. And of course, as soon as it went to Dog Brothers, I changed so much of what I was doing before because it was just like training like this is not going to make me, is not going to put me in a place where I can execute it against them, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you can't just continue training exploration of volumes of information and expect to be able to fight with it. You need to focus yourself on how you're going to apply it in the fight, how you're actually going to, because you have to elevate your senses, you have to elevate your awareness about what, what precipitates that opportunity. Because if you're looking at the opportunity like you do in the drills, you'll never see it in real time. You have to see what happens before it. And, and so you need to see what precipitates that movement. Um, and that changes your training dramatically. So thank you, Dog Brothers, for changing my, my uh, training dramatically. But then you have someone like Mang Rami come along and clarify every single detail. And if you've read his book, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. So I could do any of the stuff that I've done before, but I have so much more clarity about it now because... I've had someone break it down. It's like, you know, if you're you're used to eating really good food, but then you start hanging out with a chef, and you know, <laughs> good. <laughs> like, That's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like so. So it it's like that because now now I can't do anything without being able to to analyze it. So it's really it's really turned my fma on its um wow. not on its ear not at all because because there was so much of the stuff that i was discovering on my own by moving with it and fighting with it but i never had this level of clarity about what i was looking at you know how there was you ever go and analyze your fights and and you're like oh well you know he, he kind of had the upper hand here and there but i think i had the timing and it, it's vague, right? Mm -hmm. It's black and white. It's it's become black and white. I know what I did wrong because I know what I meant to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very it's changed. Wow. Just um you know, it's funny when I had oh, a couple and of Yes, I teach the kids the exact same stuff I teach the adults, but their parents have to train with them. Awesome. Oh, that's wow. cool. That's okay. cool. Yeah, that is. Wow. Um just as far as you know, it's funny on the KI, you know, one of my questions would be, and you kind of <clears throat> indirectly already answered it, but do you, with your students and all that, do you incorporate the concepts and tactics from there, or do you kind of, are you kind of keeping that to yourself or maybe the upper echelon of your students, you know, with respect to that? You, what's so amusing um i have tried to share the magic with many people um like the things that are really earth shatteringly significant to me mm -hmm. and um very few of the people that i have shown reach for it yeah, you talked about that in the first episode, I think, a bit. Like, you were showing stuff and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, but I know this from that, that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, 
you know, there's a there's there's a group of people that that keep on reaching for it, and I I share with them every week, and uh, we go absolutely all the way into it. I don't hold back with them, um, and I do my very best to recreate the experience I've had with Giamaka Pagal, which gotcha. I know I'm never going to be able to match, but I like, I literally need another 20 years to like study the things that he talks about in reference to be able to reproduce it. Um, and a couple of extra languages. So, <laughs> and, you know, and language isn't my strong set, but, um, there i reveal it i reveal it and even in my in my regular classes where um you know we're looking at stuff there will be moments where they'll be like well what did you do there because that's not exactly what you showed the first time because i'm you know during the demo i got excited and i i do it like i have a sword in my hand instead of a stick and and they're like and i'll show them what i did um but uh yeah yeah, I definitely, I definitely show the material and the tactics and strategies to, to the people that show me that they're serious about learning. With, you know, and that's awesome, Aaron. I'm, I'm, you know, that um, with regards to your application, as far as sparring, regardless of the weapon translation. Are you, did you immediately begin to incorporate some of the stuff in your sparring or yeah. did it take a little time and you gradually in increments got more comfortable and confident or? Well, I'll, I'll tell you the, so for instance, when I started doing CLAT, it took me about four years before I started fighting it, before it started being present when I was at Dog Brothers, and and uh, you know, I got to go up against Eric, right? Eric McCracken. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and, wow. and it worked way better than I expected. Way better than I expected. But it took me a long, long time to figure it out um how to put it in there and it took me a long time to develop enough skill that i could get the right timings and and it would start coming out and so you know the, it was years before i would let myself explore that while i'm sparring because it was just like i don't know that i can do that at full speed um, but i got there um with the ki and the way that i learned it um yeah, we were at full speed. We there was never a time where we weren't talking about it being full speed, where it was never about full intention. So um, I'm certain it would be there if I'm fighting, although I haven't had the opportunity to prove it. So, but when I did my first lecture with Maka Pagal and he he taught us about measure, I learned it incorrectly. And I applied it right away and I still got great results. So, um, yeah, but I had it a little bit mixed up and I wasn't doing it quite right, but I still had great results. When you say great results, so perhaps you maybe you got like skimmed as opposed to getting like a full on hit. So, so, uh, when I came back that year, I was, um, injured. I had a, a, a back injury that I had been nursing for a couple of years and, um, I was a little bit scared to get into the full dog brothers fight with clinch and ground game. And so yeah. I, I told everybody, I was like, Hey, I, I want to fight today, but can we just use aluminum? And so it, it becomes more of a, we're going to play a blade game instead of a, a, a smash and bash kind of game. And so everybody was really nice and gave me that fight. And I um, barely got touched that day except by a guard dog uh he got he got me twice um and uh yeah but it worked really well <laughs> I, so so it was a big day for me but it, it wasn't uh again 
it wasn't the full on Dog Brothers experience where they were looking to close range. No, they're crashing yeah, in. This is more of a blade. I gotcha. Okay. But, but uh, you know, I was really, really happy with the way it worked. And then, of course, mm -hmm. we haven't had oh. uh, a gathering since. Well, I haven't had a gathering since. So since right, right, right. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. You know that you were because I was really curious about that. You know what you were you know, able to implement you know and, and all that as far as sparring and i knew like you mentioned like you know full-on you know stick crash bash i mean that might be you know but uh, i don't know this mccracken fellow but i think i've heard the name before um he's a yeah. he's a let's put it this way one time we were fighting and we were using the heavier longer dog brother sticks and he was wearing uh just a muscle shirt and I threw a number one full on and he walked in and took it across the chest like this, just so he could grab me and hit me. Like he knew he was taking the hit. He did not care. So I'll give you an idea of what he is. A, he's a difficult problem. <laughs> he's a very difficult problem. So, yeah. He's like a big, uh, big, big, big teddy bear, like super strong. He's ready to to take some hits, but super nice at the same time. You know, yeah. I met well, him like God. twice, but thank God he's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's nice when you're not fighting him. Yeah. When you're fighting him, he's terrifying. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, that would be like, boom, and he's just grabbing me. I'm just, I'd be like, oh man, this is, oh. man, this is a bad day. <laughs> it's a bad day. It's a bad day, but uh, that particular day uh, it was less bad. So, yeah. um, was... but at the same time, I don't know about KI. Well, it's not true. I know about KI, but I don't know KI. At mm -hmm. the same time, mm -hmm. for like stick, big stick, and bashing and ground game, it, KI is more like for sword work actually. So it's better for aluminum, yeah. no? KI, yeah, yeah. It's just my opinion. Sean did certainly contradict or jump in. I personally, KI, I don't. They're not going to do well. You know, I mean, measure, long, middle, you know, fraction and Vagata trying to play with, but under heavy crashes. It's, because it's, it's not the same weapon. It's, not it's just not KI. Yeah, it's yeah. not their, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, know, I think um, it really depends on who you're fighting and what their mentality is. If the if you're in a, a stick versus stick mentality um, and and you haven't, transferred your dagger work to your striking mm -hmm. then you're going to suffer you're going to suffer in the dog brothers environment using ki but that's only because you're in a an mma environment mm -hmm. <laughs> right and and um and trading is okay you don't yeah. but but yeah. you get in with dogs that want to treat it like you know, the weapons are lethal. A cut and, is a cut. And they're going to yeah. respect that. Yeah. Then that well, that's nice. Different. Okay. Yeah, it's very that's different. Good. But you, yeah, that's awesome to hear that you got guys that are willing, you know, to play that. That's 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 awesome. Well, I mean, what you mean in the Dog Brothers? Guys within that that are willing to do that. That you said. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that especially in Europe, a lot of the uh, there's a lot of Dog Brothers that are HEMA players champions ah oh, right okay, okay. so okay. so it's a it's a different um environment because you got a lot of people that are thinking blade before mm. they came into the dog brothers environment before they can ah they had that before coming in i got gotcha. you okay. yeah and now they're thinking well how about like full-on contact with no rules that'd be <laughs> yeah, so, yeah 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 okay so okay. it's yeah, it changes wow. things. I got it. I, when I was in Bern, I had to fight a guy named uh, that they call Sword Dog, you know, and he wanted to go double sword. And, uh, you know, I was a little miffed afterwards because they kept showing him, you know, catching the tip of my nose on my, on my uh, mask, but they didn't show the big, like, cut him in half across the ribs that I got later in the fight. <laughs> but, if he was thinking sword, well, I never made it to that hit, right? So, like, mm -hmm. looking back on it now, it's like I had no reason to be miffed about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 
Wow, <laughs> that's fascinating stuff. No, thank you for. I mean, I I, I thought that was really insightful. Um, Martin, I thought had. I was just telling Martin before we got on here, man. I'm like, man, yeah. Martin gave me like I thought like the best questions out of anybody I've like brought on here to help me. I thought his questions were just like, um, and Martin, your thing on the. Um, I'm gonna let you handle this, Martin, because I just thought it was just outstanding on the three spheres. Yeah, the tr well, that's my personal. I'm not the only one, but the way I see martial arts is like three spheres that are interrelated, not uh, separated from each other. But I see like three spheres from the martial arts: traditional arts, combat sports, and combatives or self-defense. And of course, they all go a bit together. But depending on the martial arts, it's more influence in one sphere than the other or two spheres more than another one. So I was wondering at your academy, which spheres do you focus on or which sphere singular do you focus on? Is it more combatives, combat sports or traditional arts? Because that's another thing with FMA. What is nice with FMA, it you can really touch on the three spheres. It's rare martial arts where you have the three spheres completely, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a really good question and it depends on who I have in the room. Um, mm. if I have my seniors and, or my fighters, <clears throat> then we look at fighting and, um, because my background is, uh, that I was a bouncer since 1987. Um, I was also a massage therapist and I, I also, uh, you know, ran my, my martial arts, but, um, I always had those three jobs going at the same time. And so for me, it was always about the real street fight. So combatives, combatives. Um, and, um, and I always looked at sport fighting as being kind of the most energy that you can put into, uh, preparing yourself for a real fight, mm. but it's never a real fight because in the real fight, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. So, um, you know, but, but that's what I train my people for is those, that combatives. And I got to say, if I have a large junior contingent in my, in my classes, then I actually will admit that I do teach recreational martial arts with a mindset towards combatives and self-defense. Um, but, but, you know, I like it to be fun. Not everybody in my school wants to be a fighter, um, but they're all very interested in reality. And that's what I like about what we do with the study of martial arts, because I don't want, I actually catch myself every once in a while showing a fancy move because it's a fancy move. And then I'm like, it's kind of bullshit. Let's move on. <laughs> and, you know, so it's, um, you know, cause it's fun to teach those. It, it's fun. It's fun to do, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, but it's, it, it's recreational martial arts, uh, at best. When I'm looking at people who have specific needs, law enforcement, military, then I'm, I'm about combat, which I think is slightly different than self-defense. Uh, that's totally different than self-defense. Um, it's another because, lens, yeah. Yeah, because most of what we're doing, like, like if we put it in the, the self-defense box is separate, separate from the combat, as separate from like recreational fitness, martial arts and sports, right? Um, like they all work together, but combat, that is not a balanced thing. It's not meant to be a balanced thing. You're talking about killing folk really quick without them knowing about it. You don't want to have a showdown. And, you know, if you are having a showdown, it's got to be over now. So, um, you know, there's very few people that really want to wrap their head around that, but for the people that want to take it that deep and who have shown that they have the attributes to get through the other information, then there's chaos. 
and and I can do that with KI. And it's not just KI because I've learned I've learned stuff like that through Vu, through through uh, Kitty Tersha. I've learned like even in even through the you know, Santo Academy when you work with Larry Hartzell, the same information is a lot more influenced by maybe his Vietnam experience. Right. Mm. So it's it's like, you know, this this drill suddenly becomes I remember is this is so funny for me, but when Guru Dan would teach us a uh, gunting drill and, mm. and he's like, so you catch it with the knife and then you pass it over here so that you can meet it again. And then Larry taught us the same thing about a week later at a seminar. And he's like, sometimes it gets stuck in the bone, so you got to knock it off so you can. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, because so clearly someone went and saw some combat, and someone, mm. right? And and I'm not giving anyone kudos for either side because different life experiences. But for me, people that do and understand the combative mindset have always been the people I really, really focus on. And, and show a lot of regard to because they've been in it and they had their lives on the line. And when they, because a person like that, no matter what they teach you, they're going to put your head in the right place. Um, and, and to me, that's, that's critical, right? So for me, I, I love the combative side, but you're not going to run a school that way, you know, and have everybody feel like a well-balanced individual at the end of the day. <laughs> right? so, yeah, and plus the students and all the business. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough. Um, people uh, will show deep interest, and in, and that's when they will get deep information. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a great, Martin. That was a great question. <laughs> that was, man. Um, before. Um, so I, I'm sorry, Sean. Uh, no problem. So we're, we're scratching out demo, and which is fine. No worries. I'm just I just need to know far as time. Well, um, I, I could demo with John, but the likelihood that he'll like take me to the ground and like smash me, catch his catch can me, is fairly high. If, if so, I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of deciding like, unless you want to see a scrap, I, I don't really have demo with me today. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No worry. No worry. John's no great, worries. but but he'll fight. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. So <laughs> Martin had another um, question before we show the vid and, and uh, go into the Russian house. Sure. Um, Martin, uh, I'm sorry. You had this one on the stick work and all that. Yeah. I j in regards to yes, teaching, but uh, since you teach mostly the system separately, not really, but mo more more for your sparring and your application, how do you put stick, panantukan, silat, and Jeet Kune Do all together? Is there, how do you link them together? Does it just go out naturally or do you have a specific system to, to make them work together, you know? Um, so that's a, that's a really fun question. And uh, I was tempted to go like, oh, you want me to teach you my secrets? But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's it's actually really straightforward. So with Jeet Kune Do, we acknowledge that all martial arts are valid and that they have something to teach us. And uh, I think that one of the things about studying Jeet Kune Do is that um, you start seeing that most martial arts are more alike than they are different, mm. that they have more in common. And um, while all of them have different starting places or, or basic units for measuring out the action, um, for instance, Wing Chun has this and uh some silat has this and this right so um you know muay thai has more of this and that is your basic unit of measure for what's happening because if your school teaches you to operate from here then everything that they're going to teach you starts from here and and so you learn it that way 
But if you're at a school where everything comes from here across center line, then this is how you're going to reference it. And if you're coming from a school that does everything from here, then that's how you're going to reference it. And what happens is, is you start noticing that while there are positions and pathways that people will travel on, they all go through common points in the orbits around the practitioner versus the opponent. And, and so they actually flow, as you start to understand those references and structures, they show you themselves where the transitions happen. So where you're moving from FMA into CLAT, which are actually related arts, but, or, you know, where you're moving from capoeira into jujitsu, for example, or, well, actually those are related arts, where you're moving from, <laughs> but, but, but you see what I mean is the references and the pathways meet up. Like I used to think that Wing Chun and this uh, boxing stance that I learned, uh, the Kabiyama gate, um, I thought that these things were different until I noticed that as soon as I fired center line that I'm in the Wing Chun guard, right? So now it's like, oh, so every time I punch him in the Wing Chun guard and every time I ton sell, I'm back in my guard. <laughs> and, and so th this is how it happens in the FMA is no different. All those chambers, all those places where you put your, your weapon are just places where you would have put your empty hands when you're transitioning from move to move to move. So it's, it all ends up being very seamless and within its own context too. So it's not like, it's not like there is a, a conscious process that you have to go through to blend martial arts. You just have to be open-minded enough to see where they blend. So by understanding the principles, you, you can kind of link them together, I guess. Principles, shapes, structures, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, pathways. Orbit. Pathways, pathways. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, so did I miss, um, Martin, was there anything else as far as before we go? No, I think let, let's go to the, this awesome video. <laughs> that yeah, there. yeah, we got to, uh, we definitely, oh, you know what though? We just got a question in, yeah. um, could you elaborate on, sh on, um, shapes? Shapes, uh, maybe. Um, so, uh, what I mean by shapes, so shapes and structures could be interchangeable, right? I guess we're going to get the demo. So, <laughs> so uh, it's good. Thank you. So, um, Let's say, why don't I have a snake? Good job, Mosey Jack. We got him to do a demo. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh, so, so did weird. Because I'm looking at you guys here, but the camera is there. So, anyway, yeah. um, normally I can look at the camera and see myself at the same time, but not right now. So, look, if, I, if I'm punching, right? And, and say, all I'm doing is punching, right? Yep. And I, I, I know I want to use this wind up. Let's use Bobby, uh, GM Bobby. Uh, I'm gonna use yours for a minute. So let's say I wound up here, right? And I've got this full wind up where I come over to here and I've got this full wind up and I'm practicing here to here, to here, to here, right? And, and so I'm learning to get that weight transfer that I need for power, but, don't I need that same weight transfer to box, right? Mm. Don't I need that same weight transfer to bob and weave, right? So it doesn't matter whether I'm 
going forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand with the stick, or if I'm punching here, or if I'm punching here, right? I'm still in the same shapes and pathways as I would have been at any other time. And eventually I could realize, well, I could throw my hip from there too, right? And likewise, if this is this, well then maybe this could be a takedown, you know, and I'm into my C lat because as soon as, as soon as I hit and, you know, now I'm in C lat because I'm in close. Anytime that I, I move past the arm, I'm in C lat, like trapping range is sweeping range, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there's very, when it comes to shape, right? The basic shape is this, right? That's it. You remember <laughs> Karate Kid? You know, <laughs> if do right. So, and, and it's it's right there. So it doesn't matter if you've got the stick or the weapon in your hand. This remains the same, right? And you know, someone grab. Okay, so I'm here, right? It's like, well, someone grabs your wrist, someone grabs your shoulder, and you clear out, and you're doing pommeling, right? Or someone tries to hit you here, and you do. Say move, right? Some of my teachers would say, well, hey, that's one of mine, right? And some of my teachers would say, oh, that's one of mine. Well, which one was the first one and which one was the second one? I know, right? But, you know, and some of my teachers will know, but you probably think it looks like something you do, <laughs> right? So, and, and it probably does look like something you do. This is the thing that I love about the JKD mindset is, you know, someone might turn to me and say, oh, we have that. And I'm like, yeah, what do you use it for? Because it's probably similar. But if it's not similar, I want to know because now I've got another side to that move that I didn't even know I could use that way. Right? Mm -hmm. So the shapes, the pathways, or the structures and the orbits, those are, you know, it's the language that we're all speaking when we move. So. Cool. Awesome. Man. Good question. That was from, all right. I'm trying to think if we missed anything. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. All right, Brian, what about pentagram or obtuse triangles? Low. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, make sure that you do a chalk circle yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paulo, devil's advocate question. Is sitting of the same benefit as squatting? <laughs> I mean, it depends on the shape of the chair, I guess. Uh, sitting and squatting. They can't mm. be if you practice it that way. I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. All the high guard cover, practicing combing my hair. Oh, that's <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. Hey, should we uh should we show this incredible vid? Let's shoot the video. Yeah, man. Which one you choose? Yeah. Matter of fact, I think we have to do to give this thing justice. Is we're gonna have to lower ourselves. So yeah, let's see that. Folks, we're gonna lower ourselves so you guys can really see this. Um, this video is pretty awesome. So. Peace out, my
And that was awesome. Man, that was uh, that was pretty special. Uh, again, uh, again, one more time. <laughs> Jonathan Payne, Cobra Kai never dies. That's Franco Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Kali never dies. <laughs> Yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, it was sweet. All right. Uh, so uh, we both kind of had some questions regarding this, but before we kind of jump into the most recent Russian house, which you just did in December in Mexico, mm -hmm. um, just for everybody, and this is uh, first part, first part is mostly Martin. What is the Russian house? You know, for those who perhaps might not know, and you know, where its goals, mission, etc., and all that. Um, so I actually have to answer this question, um, based on a conversation that I had about eight years ago in Desensano, Italy with Alex when I met him, uh, and, um, and, and on my experience of having been there, um, so when I met Alex way back, um, we were both at uh, CLAC camp and uh, we, <laughs> we were finished. We went for drinks. We're walking around waiting for, uh, for dinner to happen. Everyone was going to get back together for dinner. We're having some beers and chatting. And I was like, so, so what do you do? And uh, he was... I believe in the phys ed department at the University Eckingsburg and uh, uh, University of Moscow in Eckingsburg, which is so like a university related to in another city. And um, he was, he had a budget to go to the Philippines on a regular basis and train with the masters and bring back the information and, and teach yeah. at the university. And um, so he's been doing this some 16, 17 years. And he was going and training with the Grand Masters, and then he would host them and bring them into uh, Russia. But then I guess he just started, you know, he's like, you know, this is so good. And he had, he had this big Russian team coming with him. And wait, 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 wait. So he was getting some funds from the university to go train with masters. Yep. Dream what, job. What did we do, what did we do right? Wrong, huh? <laughs> yeah, what did wow. we do wrong? How come we're not working with the university? <laughs> I'm telling you. Man. But you know what? It, this is this was kind of the beginning of my realization that we don't understand what, what Russians are about. We just don't. We, because we yeah, have, I, I don't. I don't we, think, yeah. We have a, a Hollywood story about what they're about. And and then they're they're actually about, but but I mean like these guys. Ha, he ha, here's a person who had a passion, who was going to school, um, who leveraged that passion, got funding to follow that passion, and because he was doing it at such a high level, you know, they supported it, wow. and um, and there it is, and you know. The, the Russians might like to drink and party, but man, do they like to train. They really like to train. So you could be out with them until three, four, five o'clock in the morning, uh, and they're all up at 7 a.m. training hard. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. and, and this is, I presume, what Alex was like in all the time leading up to me actually going there and learning about the thing itself and myself but at some point i think alex just went you know what everybody can come it doesn't just have to be us because i believe that he moved out of the phase where he was working uh specifically with and for the university and started to just doing it for the very large group of people that was going with him and then you started having an international community gathering at that and and it was just wide open and um there's a couple of really amazing things so if i were to say what the mission of it is i would say that his mission is to um 
create as much exposure as possible for his team and the larger international community that that works with them um, to the grandmasters and masters of the Filipino martial arts and and more recently uh Silat as well um and give them just a maximal opportunity to interact show what each system has it's unique uh, show what they all have in common and um, just have a really great time doing it. And I know it's also very important to him that there's always a cultural experience, that there's always a community experience, and that there's always an adventure. So because every day, not only do you have training, but, you know, every couple of days you go on an adventure you go experience part of the country or you go and experience the ruins or a geological feature or a beach or you you go out on uh on the vintas and well not really vintas but you go out on the boats and and see the uh, coastal waters are like so it's you know there's always those things and of course the whole time that's happened, you're being introduced to Filipino culture and history in the Philippines by people that have lived it. So um, there are, I sent you, Dean, uh, while we were talking, I sent you a list of all the instructors that I know yeah. that have been there. So at some point, if you want to show it, um, but there's so many instructors and it was neat for me because when I first went, I wanted to see I just really wanted to see how how well the West had captured the art because all of my experience was here in North America, a little bit in Europe. Um, and I wanted to see how well we had captured the art. And there were glaring misunderstandings <laughs> about what we believed um, and what it actually was. And, um, and things that, you know, probably only could have been clarified by actually being present and mm. organically witnessing a whole bunch of people talking about the same things because they're from there, right? Like, for instance, the 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 word Kali, right? They don't they don't the old men don't use it. And Gee, that's never been brought up in FMA discussion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, they, they, no, I'm just, I know, I know. The, the, the old men, the GMs that I met the first year, they were always, they were always talking about Arnis and Eskrima. And then you could see, like, it was always interrelated, even though they were doing different things. So, and I, you know, yeah, I don't mean to bring up a political discussion. No, 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 not at all. No, I'm glad that, the, you know, <laughs> it basically compounds to basically what was discussed in FMA discussion over several times and all that, that kind of, you know, Western creation, so to speak. And it's not used over there, you know, so. Yeah, I've heard different creation stories about that, but, you know, it, it's just interesting because you, you, you get there and you see the culture. Like one of the things I've never done that I've told that I really need to do is I need to see a cockfight and to really understand the mentality behind knife fighting and sword fighting because there's an acceptance there that there's a really good chance that there's going to be a double kill. Mm -hmm. no. And if you don't actually see that, you know, that, that there's a possibility that maybe you'll miss the fact that it's at least in the seventies and earlier, that that was like very central to systems. It's very interesting what you say, because I did see, more than once uh, a double kill in a cockfight in the philippines so it does happen i never watched one mm. yeah so for yes, sure I'm... it happens it happened with the dueling also with humans absolutely <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. Uh -huh. and 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 this is the the interesting thing one of the interesting things that i'm coming to realize is is uh we accept double kills pretty readily over here in north america because we, we stick fight, 
The stick fighting, yeah, I was. But, but I mean, like we say that, oh well, this could be a sword. Yep, but yep. Okay, when we okay. spar with it, and we're not, and we're treating it like, oh well, I can take that hit. So, well, you know, it's not a sword anymore. Like, does it just change? <laughs> I know. That's good. Excellent point. Wow, that was uh, that was well done by you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Does it just like? Does it just? You know? it's like, yeah, it's like it's a lightsaber. But <laughs> and and you know it's funny because I get I think I get to get away with saying that because I've been on I've been on all sides of that equation. Like I've been, I've I've definitely gone through a decade at least of my existence where it was like half the time I'm in a sparring set and I'm like, oh, it's okay. It was a stick fight. It's like, but if it was a sword fight, I remember having conversations with my friends like, yeah, but if it was sword and, and, you know, and, and we were just being fluid about what it was. Yeah. So, but, but in the, when, when you start thinking about the cockfight, when you start thinking about blades being in there and, and you've seen how, how many of the fights might have a winner, but then the mm. winner dies afterwards. Wow. So. What did you think of that? Because I mean, you know, I'm just, I've always of course heard about them over there, but you know, never watched, I gotta be honest, never watched one, Ooh. don't know much about it. Didn't understand the craze. What would, like you're there, what was your, I mean, what'd you think? Would you? Of cockfighting? Yeah, watching. Honestly, this is by the way. This is uh, what they put on the one of the foot of. Uh, yeah, it's super wow. sharp. This is for Brian. He just commented. It's super sharp. Yeah, and wow. and handlers of these animals sometimes get killed. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> because the handlers. Yeah, because that knife is so dangerous. If 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 the bird comes oh, out, all the thing would go nuts, and you don't have good control of it. Okay, okay. Yeah, my wife was telling me about because where I saw them, her uh, the village where she comes from, it's like three hours from the the nearest hospital. At some point, there's a guy who got stabbed in the leg. And he's got three hours with, with to, this uh, with, with uh, this freaking blade uh, wow. handling the cut and. Of course, he bled out before arriving to the hospital. That, well, Super I, dangerous. I gotta be honest with you. I had no idea to the magnitude that of those what they were found. What do you think? So, Sean, you're seeing it. I mean, what no, I haven't. Seen, I haven't. Oh, seen okay, it. okay. I, I have not. I'm told that I must. Um, Are you told? Okay. That that my understanding won't be complete until I do, um, and uh, and I believe it because. Again, I'm drawn to people that have had combat experience, and um, because I know that I I have to get my head right if I'm going to be if I'm going to say that I'm dealing with combatives, right? Mm -hmm. Because I haven't I haven't had to kill anybody, right? Fortunately. Um, you know, I had a, cer a certain, I had a moment in my life where the question came up, uh, and I knew what, I knew I could answer it, but then the situation changed and I didn't have to do it. And I'm so very, very grateful for that, uh, that out that life gave me, um, that I didn't have to, I didn't have to try and complete that intention, but, um, you know. I, I presume seeing the cockfight would stabilize this idea even more that when you go blade versus blade, there's three outcomes. You're both gonna die or one of you is gonna die. And it's really, really good chance that if one of you dies, the other one's seriously injured. Seriously injured, yeah, <laughs> you know? no, no. So, and, and maybe disfigured and, or crippled. So it's, it's just that th this is the most likely outcome in a blade fight. And how many of us are training with that in mind? You know, how many of us are sparring with that in mind? How many are doing our analysis with that in mind? Right? Mm, probably not enough. <laughs> if I look at myself and I hold myself accountable to that uh, analysis, 
I know that even now that I'm very, very aware that it, it needs to be that way, that I'm not always there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I think it's easy just to get, I don't know, yeah, to lose sight of it, you know, because you're, you're in play, you're with students and distractions and you kind of just, you know, yeah. Um, this is really interesting though. Wow. In play. Just the parallel of cockfighting. Like I never knew Mark, man, they had those things on, man, that's, that's sick. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I must admit I gamble and a couple of them, I'm sorry. Martin, we're gonna have to, Martin, we're gonna so, have to have a talk after this show. <laughs> but you, you've had the experience; you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was your visceral reaction? Uh, I was surprised how quick it was. Wow. I was surprised how. First of all, when I went, because it's my brother-in-law who brought me, I didn't know there was those blades attached to the, one of the foot, right. the chicken. So when I saw the blade, I'm like, "Oh, okay, it's another game." <laughs> it's That's completely totally another game. Now I can yeah. see though what Sean's talking about, like the double kill. Yeah. When he was saying that, and I didn't know they were I'm like, wait a minute, chickens double kill. Chicken like, start that but then when you show that, I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, now I see the double kill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's much. It goes much faster than I thought it would. That's, much faster. And wow, yeah. that's true. Uh, so how do we? Sorry, Sean, you're gonna have to bring us back from the pre pre uh, cockfights. <laughs> we were talking about the excursion from the Russian house, I think. Oh, well, I, I think what, what we were talking about was was like the um, the difference between the the legends and what what for yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. difference between what I gathered by training in North America. Okay. And, and training Filipino martial arts in North America outside of the experience of being in the Philippines. Yeah, that's right. Because okay. the truth is, as recently as the 70s, there were still duels. Mm. <laughs> right? Like, I could have, if I lived in the Philippines, I could have witnessed that as a child. Right, so it, it's a very different environment to try to to to, and I don't think that we've done a bad job. I'm not saying we've done a bad job, but there are there are things that you'll realize about the culture uh, when you're there that you won't realize about the culture when you're reading history books and studying here. You know, mm. with, with our influences, uh, even if some of those influences. Um, are from there so um, but but when you're when you're immersed and you see a larger community of these gentlemen that that are at the top of the FMA game in the locale and have the family history and still live in the location uh, still live in the village where things yeah it's different it's really different. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, it's really. revealing, but but not like in a way where it's like it doesn't change your skill level; it just changes your understanding of where you're at. Different perspective. Much different perspective. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, kind of why I wanted to go there because I know that I never know until I'm there. It's like watching someone fight. I never like to comment on like, oh, well, I would just do this to that guy because. I, I run a thing called the Throwdown Group, and I watch people all the time. And I'm like, "No, man, you're doing it wrong. You got to this. You got to that." And then I fight them, and I'm like, "Oh, oh, you're making it work." Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I, I I can't I can't until I've experienced it myself. It's really hard for me to to say, "Yeah, I get it." But, I think that's just a good thing to do, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're not jumping to conclusions or. I don't know, but, uh, hey, you know, the pictures you just, I did get the pictures you just sent me, Sean. Are those from the first, are those from the one you just went to in December? Uh, those, those, the list of names? Correct. Yeah, so it's it's three pages. One of them I think I got repeated. Uh, it's three pages, and it's the people who have instructed at Russia House over the years. Over the years. Okay, so um, do you want me to pull them up? Sure. Okay. See some names there. Show some respects. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Here we go. 
Um, so hopefully these did save. Let's see if they're coming through. All right, let's see which one this is. Because I'm... All right, so this is going to be... Oof. I'm going to have to... Like the uh, last or middle page. <laughs> that, I'm sorry, which page was this? Uh, probably the last one. Let's start with the Grandmasters. Okay, let me... Uh, all right, this, this is what the gurus. Okay. All right, let's get let's get rid of that one. We can, we can do it in reverse order. It doesn't matter. Let me let me pull up because uh, when you just sent me these, I, I just kind of quickly downloaded them just to have them, so I wasn't sure which. Uh, yeah. Let's see what this one is. My apologies. I, I asked John to like yeah. do a bit of a layout thing on them, and and uh, no worries. Send them off. You'll make it work. Is this the Grandmasters? No. That's the two Hansa Gurus. That's the second page. So we're just doing it backwards. That's good. <laughs> All right. Here goes here goes for going backwards. Um, can you see that, Martin? You're yep. the owner. <laughs> yeah. So if you can, Martin, name them out. Well, the two Hans, there's uh, Ray Dionaldo, Mel Tortal, Nonoy Garucho, Gurus and Masters. I hope I'm not going to massacre some names uh nash elizar neil elizar norman elizar alex ursia jj no, hervas yeah. alex yeah. ormaza rodem yeah. roden yeah. paul rosales paul rosales yeah. sony sison uh, antonio tojero and oh sean zerger yeah so, sunny sunny season yeah okay okay no i think it sounds like you did pretty good all right, let's uh so these were there. All right, let's pull up um let's see who else we got next. Let's pull up. All right. So the first one I pulled was right, we, can, what... we can leave the grandmasters for last. It'd be like a finale. All right. Who is this? Let me see what I got here. That's, that's two ones again. Yeah, that's the same one. Why did it download twice? What the freak? That was my fault. Oh, no, no. Uh, I think it was mine if I downloaded it twice. Um, yeah, I, I, dub I duplicated one. Oh, okay. That's on me. It's because it's the I one did. with your name on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> this should be different. What we got here? All right. Yeah. Maestros of Payete. Yeah. Uh, Rinaldo Doy Valdemore. Cesar Papai Cadang. Roque Oki Valiente, Rogelio Ojin Alberto, Ruel, Rene Culot de los Reyes, Melan Yasona, Great guy. Anthony. Uh, for the Silat, we have Sigumol Morni and Guru Alvin Guinanao. Awesome. Yeah. So I just find. Uh... I met the, the masters from Payete my, my first time. And uh, uh, Roge uh, Oki uh, Valente, uh, Valiente, uh, he, he worked with me one-on-one -on -one for a little while, trying to teach me their version of measure. And uh, man, I thought they were playing a joke on me because he was he's half my height. He could always reach me and I couldn't reach him. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> I was just like, how is this working? It was very uh, upsetting and exciting, but <laughs> All right, let's pull up. Now I should be able to pull up the, this hopefully should be the grandmasters. This should be it. Um, let's see here. Let's find out. I just re-downloaded one that was separate, so. Uh, I don't know. Why is that giving me issues? I don't know. Hmm. Um, Tell you what, I'll send it to you again. Yeah, I got it, just... Um, let me just see here. This hopefully is this it? This should be it. No, nope, that's this two ones again. God, maybe. 
What's going on? Here you yeah, go. If you want to, okay. Let's do that. All right. Pulling it up now. But in the meantime, uh, okay. It's the third yeah. one. I'll send it to you again. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I just got it now. Okay. Oh, that, that logo's still on there. Oh, well. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Before <laughs> the logo, oh, we didn't steal that from anywhere. That wasn't supposed to be on there. I, uh, I, I did, I did. I'm trying to design one for them, and the, and I, the placeholder's still there. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Seven four. Forget All right. <laughs> okay, we should be able to pull this up now. All right. Let's see. All right, in the meantime, uh, Marty, you want to ask the compare and yeah, contrast? Maybe could, could you compare both Russian house, the the one in the Philippines and the one they opened in Mexico? Uh, you told you told yesterday, you said yesterday that they opened the one in Mexico because it was closed in the Philippines because of COVID, right? Yes. So what 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 are the difference you found in uh, in both? Was it pretty much the same principle, the same thing? Was it better? Was it worse? It is definitely the same principle, right? You you have a, a vacation, an adventure, a social, and training, especially training, because we would do uh, four, five, six hours a day um, of training, um, but we'd also uh, we went on some tours. We saw some uh, pyramids. Uh, we saw some cenotes. Um, saw some beaches. We saw uh, there we go. There's the grandmasters, and um, you know. So we had the adventures and the tours. Uh, we had the parties. the The hotel was amazing. The food was amazing. Uh, you know, the drinking was hilarious. And um, but but it's it's the same principle absolutely um but the i guess the difference is is there weren't as many instructors and there wasn't as much training because there weren't as many instructors um you know the like it's common for us to get in sometimes where i went we'd have like four full days of um exposure to say Balintawak and uh, Barasagbo. And, and then we would go and the days would get mixed and we would go to another location and we would have uh, Estacado de Campo and uh, uh, Nickel Stick uh, with uh, Nick and Norman uh, Elazar teaching us. And then we would have uh, some sealat, uh, you know, and we'd have sealat in the morning for sunrise, and then we'd have sealat in the evening for sunset, uh, and we'd be like training in between. And it, so, in the Philippines, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's more likelihood that there's going to be a midday adventure, like maybe we're going to travel to another beach, or we're going to jump on a boat and go to another island. Um, but, but the the in the Philippines there. Are, there's a lot of grandmasters, a lot of family mm -hmm. um, that that are still training the old way, and then they'll show up with their whole entourage. You know, like that first time I went and I met the masters from Payete, uh, and they were introduced by Gia Maka Bagal, um, and uh, they brought us, they brought us, uh, I don't know, moonshine. Was that the right word? <laughs> but and, and so we had that for breakfast. And then we got into training, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know, and then we're like, we're at a springs, like a volcanic spring. So it's like, and then we, you know, would enjoy that for a few hours. And it's just like, it's hard to beat that. Uh, the, when we went to Negros, you know, we're at another spring up in the mountains 
And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll do a couple of seminars and then the bats take flight and the, the whole sky is the whole bat. Go to the go to the hot springs uh, and maybe go for a hike and come back and do some more training at night after dinner. Wow! So it's, you know, in Mexico, um, I think what happened was that they had to spread it out a little bit more for the vacation adventure part uh, because the hotel training part was very structured. That ten days was very structured. We stayed pretty much in that place. We, we went out a couple times for like meals or going, you know, to the party center of Cancun, um, which, which was fun, but it wasn't really like we came back to the hotel and had more fun there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's really, I think the, in the Philippines, it's really special um, because we can have so much exposure to each of the system's home area. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it was yeah. and Batayan, um, you know, just like it was, but, but it was a different set of instructors than say you would get in Negros, right? Or a different set of instructors that you might be working with if you were uh, in Manila, so for example. Mm -hmm. And in Mexico, it was mostly masters from from United States, or certainly masters that uh, frequent the United States, um, because I, I mean, you know, some of them live there, and uh, some of them, you know, are traveling back and forth between the states and the Philippines and and everywhere else on the planet, uh, doing their seminars. So, um, yeah, in Mexico, we had more people that were based. Currently based out of the US. Yeah. Speaking of masters, let me read this uh, Grand Masters list. So there was uh, Rennie Tongson, Rodel, da Rodel Dagok, Bambit Dulai, Romeo Macapagal, uh, Bobby Taboada, Nick Elizar, Danny Casio, Celestino Macachor, Eduardo Ceniza, Feliz Cortez, Felix. Phil, Felix Cortez, sorry, Felix yeah. Guinabo, Rafi Pambuan, Am, yeah. Ambundio Baet, and Moni Velez, and late Grandmaster Manuel Owet Borses. Oh, that's right, yeah. Felix Cortez, I think, actually is coming on next month. Oh, so cool. that's that'll funny. be fun. That'll be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, How so. does it work, the Russian house? Is it? It's not open all year long, it's a specific moments during the year or yeah it's usually like uh january february okay uh, you know this year they did december like before christmas um which which worked really well in mexico um but usually i think they're 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 getting it done just before the hot season right okay mm. and um so it's camp but and this is all praises to Alexander Pisarkin for this. It's a camp where, where all these grandmasters come together and there is no animosity. It is so much fun. I don't know if it's because he manages like it so well, or, and this is what I'm inclined to believe, or if it's just the attitude of the Russians precludes people from getting uppity. Uh, hmm. I've never seen, I've never seen like anyone bickering at, at one of these events, you know, there's oh, just that's um, nice. that's never nice. been any, any politics being aired. No, that's, wow. at that he must have a, a, a special way about himself. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to, maybe, uh, the, maybe the alcohol for breakfast. I don't know. Well, yeah, that could have something to do with it too, huh? <laughs> I, I actually haven't seen alcohol for breakfast on it on a training day. Um, but, uh, the, um, well, no, that did happen that one time, but, <laughs> but we were meeting the, the, the group for the first time. I feel like that was actually a special thing that the Payette Arnis group was doing to, to greet us. Mm. So um, it wasn't like we all got tanked. <laughs> we, we had a sip, 
But um, yeah, I, I felt that that was something sort of special that they were doing to like welcome us because we were in Laguna, uh, which was, you know, close, close by. Um, and it's also a very important location for FMA because they, they have the uh, tournaments there. Um, and uh, yeah, but I think, you know, getting back to that question, I think it's actually just the Russian character and the character of those guys because they're there to train and they're yeah. there to appreciate. Mm. And that's all that happens there. They just feel awesome and yeah, resonate they just, with others, you know? Yeah, because I, I don't think it was any, ever about anything other than he was really excited to learn all this stuff. Because every mm. one of these people that we're learning from, he's gone in ahead of time and, and uh, worked intensively with the, with the Grandmaster to acquire their system. Uh, so when we go there, you know, he already knows the stuff. He's seen it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's a, a what an incredible thing. Wow. He's a he's a he's a really neat practitioner. And if if you could ever get him to to do an interview, you would be yeah. We I definitely interesting person him. to get talking. Yeah, I definitely reached out to him. He was just a little reluctant. I, I still haven't given up. He was a little reluctant to to the language barrier, but I'm like, well, we got to get somebody can help out with that. I mean, so. Well, he, I've never seen him, you know, go out of his way to put himself center stage. He's, his thing is he's always putting other people center stage. Um, Maybe so that's maybe, why it's working that well also in the Russian house, right? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I mean, I feel like the fact that he let me have a little piece of stage at all made a, a, a big impact on my career. So, you know, but that's, this is what he does. He, he, he mm. finds, um, he finds people and he exposes his team to those people and they would try to retain as much as they can. No, it's uh, because it's coming from a right place. It's purely out of passion. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. Yeah. I haven't seen any evidence to the contrary. So mm. it looks very, uh, you know, is one of the things I didn't really get, um, you know, going there from, and, and, you know, going from Canada, like we don't have any animosity towards Russia. Um, but, but I mean, we had, I had a certain number of preconceptions about what I thought they were going to be like, mm. and, uh, they're just really wholesome kind people that train hard and drink hard but it's mm. all really nice you know like arm around you laughing like happy curious asking you questions like yeah no it's all really really friendly nice oh. yeah and very easygoing and everything's always under control <laughs> Which is under control. wow <laughs> Come in, huh? Man, so um, so Mark, did you have anything else on the Russian house? Because we can go, um, because Mark, you had something about uh, if he could choose. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 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 no, those uh, tricky questions, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of nice questions to finish an interview. I think it's just fun, just for just so. for the fun of it. Uh, if you could choose one style. In the ones you practice right now for the rest of your life, uh, it could be Filipino martial arts or any other style, but the one that you practice for the rest of your life, what would it be? I have to choose one style of martial art to train for the rest of my life. You cannot train any other styles. Uh, yeah, so I don't recognize the universe in which that is a thing that I have to choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I, I can tell you this. I I will continue training Ki in its in the format that I'm currently training it for the rest of my life. Um, yes, yeah, it's, wow. uh, it's, it's something about that man. Huh? What is going on with that art? It's extremely <laughs> compelling. It's extremely extremely compelling. 
Uh, that said, that said, I'm I'm never going to isolate myself from the larger world of martial arts because no, that just has nothing to do with who I am or reality or or how to grow as a human being. So um, so I won't actually do it. Um, you know, if I can choose uh, a new martial art. Yeah, right? that's, that's, that's my second, second part, question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I could choose a new martial art right now, um, I want to learn the Polynesian arts next. Oh, so nice. Interesting. Whether, whether that's the hula or the haka or uh, something, you know, somewhere in between, I, I feel like the Polynesian arts are where it's at, and I don't think that watching Boba Fett really covers it for me. So, the you know, I, I, I've been wanting to check out the Polynesian arts for a while. Um, and, you know, I've seen glimpses of things over the last few years, and I've, I've been looking that way and trying to open up avenues uh, for the last few years in that direction. Um, also, if I had the opportunity to study some more of the traditional um, upright forms of CLAT, um, I would I would jump at that. Hmm. Interesting. Some parts of the Polynesian arts that's different. No. Um, what um, what future goals? You know, future goals for yourself and the school. Short-term goal, I want to get in shape and go fight in Dog Brothers again. Um, it's not that short-term of a goal, but uh, if I could get out to Germany in the springtime, that would make me very, very happy. Um, of course, I'm going to have to stop avoiding the workouts. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've, been, I've been bad this week. Uh, but I'll get back to it because uh, now I've said it in front of everybody. Um, <laughs> so... Um, I want to publish my curriculum and um, mm. that is a kind of a medium term goal. And I guess for my long term goals is uh, I'd like to establish um, another cadre of instructors uh, from the ground up um, with what I know now and uh, and, you know, in the hopes that they'll want to continue on with this work and uh involving other people in in the work both the blend and in the specific arts that i'm well and ki <laughs> right so because because there's there's jkd which is everything and then there's mm -hmm. ki which is ki uh so um yeah those those are those are my my main goals going forward at the moment amazing awesome those are great. Yeah, yeah. This has been. Uh, well, I want to thank you for coming on again. This has been absolutely wonderful. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to do this with us. Oh, I, I I'm really glad, and um, you know, thank uh, Sebastian for for uh, wanting me to have another opportunity to talk about my school. I guess with the the school reopening, um, which which by the way we're really really pleased about. Uh, I was telling John. Uh, about my ideas to have like a COVID proof gym uh, where we could exchange the air and have the sunlight and like just, and he found the spot where we could, where we could just open it to the air uh, full time and, and, you know, have extra UV in here, but, uh, and, and of course air exchange, but um, yeah, it, it's really nice to have the new space and be able to to talk about it. But I, I'm especially glad to be able to talk about Russia House, talk about Alex, because yeah, that is a great experience. And I think, uh, you know, anybody that that has thought about wanting to go to the Philippines and seeing what it's about should strongly consider that event. Yeah, it's worth it. No, I know that's I know that's a, on the certainly on my bucket list. Um, but you're gonna be coming back. Actually, you're gonna be coming back. Uh, that ki word, the ki ki thingy. Yeah. <laughs> how exciting! <laughs> it is very exciting. I, I mean, I don't know how exciting it is for people that aren't, um, you know, engrossed in it. 
but uh, for me, it's incredibly exciting to chaos. Yeah, it's just amazing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm really interested to actually to see the other interviews and see what 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 folks have to say, what they want to talk about. Yeah, that. kicking off Friday. Uh, GM Mark and Brandon, uh, assuming all goes well, and then um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to try to make the questions not repetitive, but kind of focus within their individuality, their history, their age, and kind of formulate questions based on that and their tenure and their style and any other variable that I can kind of attach it to. So, and of course. And then as we go down, just so they're not, I mean, there's going to be some repetition, but I don't want it to be extremely kind of just re recycling questions, you know? Are, are those two related instructors or two uh, unrelated instructors? They're GM, Mark, and Brandon unrelated. I didn't hear the answer. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Unrelated. Unrelated. Oh, okay. So is that is that kind of your your format plan is to have like two two unrelated KI instructors like talk KI? I that I would like to go with that approach, but I'm not set in stone on that. I'm I'm pretty flexible. But I thought it would be bring an interesting dynamic as far as getting different lenses and from the lineage they came from, what was instilled in from their lineage. Like for instance, I could tell you, you know from the difference from Ricketts lineage from Kiro lineage. I mean, right. I'm not saying to an exact T, but I could definitely give you some pretty differences. Um, yours are going to be interesting because as well as I obviously know a, a Romeo and all that, but that's not to say though, I know anything about his style teaching or what he emphasizes and what have you, you know, it's not terribly um, public anything about his. <laughs> yeah. So is he is he okay with you doing it? He's in your corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I um, uh, I don't really make a move in Ki without talking to him, um, because uh, well, I've never really had a, a martial arts relationship like this one before, uh, because he's never charged me, and um, he's old school, which means. So in the old tribal tradition, you don't teach outside the tribe mm. uh, and you don't teach for money. Um, so generally you would only teach for, uh, you'd only teach family, right? So usually like sons of close friends or, you know, nephews or something like that. Um, but he's made a couple of exceptions to that. And, and uh, so I'm really careful, I'm really careful because I realized like, it's kind of like being adopted to the tribe, but I'm not part of, I'm not blood. So right, I right. have to be very, very respectful and careful that I don't cross any lines. So no, 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 fair, no, fair enough. I mean, and of course we're nothing, we're going to do nothing but to respect that as well. So, you know, we'll, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be meeting with everybody before we do it. So, I, you know, I'm not going to throw any curveballs or surprises at anybody. I want this to be educational, enjoyable, and for people to really see what it's about and that it's not. And hopefully maybe cure and bring, solidify some of the fractures. Or I mean, that's ultimately what I'm trying to do as well. But I'm not saying I'm going to be 100% successful, but I, at least I could look back and say I tried. Uh, I think that's a noble cause. And personally, I'm just really interested in what everyone's going to have to say because, um, relatively speaking, I'm sort of new to KI. I mean, we we have Illustrissimo in the Innocento uh, Academy, um, yeah. and once I met GM Macmagal and started doing KI with him, like suddenly, like there was a a forest of ki around me that i'd never seen before um and and so it's it's interesting because like you said i've seen differences um and uh i'm going to be really excited to see what all is said as a through the course of your me life. too me too like it's so weird like i'm like i looked at like the list when i'm interviewing and you know and not that it's going to be nowhere boring but like i want to hear like like thus far you like people that I 
don't really know much about like what they've got, you know, and uh, like what was stressed, you know, what far as conceptually, you know, and all that. So I'm like looking forward like to hearing what you got. Uh, Norman, I would definitely like to, Maestro Norman, you know, definitely maybe Dax and all that. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm just having Brandon on and all that. Um, some of the Kiro guys, you know, but really what's going to be new to me is definitely, I got to say, it's probably going to be the Canada guys, you and uh, Maestro Norman, you know. Um, so, I mean, Kiro's got the most reps, I think globally if i had to guess if i had to guess i think kiro's got the most reps right now as far as europe states even in canada like in toronto i think uh archie loses you know um definitely the states oh, okay yeah um so it would be interesting yeah i agree with you i'm i'm it's gonna be interesting to hear what others say exactly and um you know is there but hopefully ultimately at the end like you kind of said that we've Obviously, more in common than not, you know. So, well, but, we're all loving yeah. swords, right? <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so, Martin, any closing thoughts from you? Uh, no, man. I one of my short-term goals is to participate in the Dog Brother event. So maybe we'll see each other then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, we will. Because awesome. I'm, I'm definitely going. Um, I want to, yeah, I want to get back into that and, uh, and hit a number of events and, awesome. and you know, be, because it's in those events that I'm going to get a really good idea of where I'm at and what I need to work on. That's mm. what it's for, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Well, Look again, I appreciate you doing this, man, coming on and obviously we'll be in touch, me and you as far as um when to bring you on friday nights generally work for you yeah i can make it work okay okay yeah i would definitely give you enough notice so yeah when it certainly wouldn't be last minute um chad bailey yeah. is asking if there's any seminars planned oh okay um i'm i'm actually talking about uh one in portland on the, the 12th no yes yes on the 12th and 13th um and uh outside of that i don't really know it's been difficult to book anything these days yeah <laughs> so yeah. and you know certainly uh something more local in toronto i i'd, I'd like to plan in the near future so mm -hmm. uh i'm sure john will tell me when we're doing that yeah yeah i know hopefully this yeah wow but uh all right all right all right um all right sir i thank you Thank you so much. Uh, it was a lot of fun talking. So thanks. yeah, same here. Same here. It was Absolutely. really nice to uh, to talk to you. Yeah, you thanks, take Mark. care. And thanks, bye, John. <laughs> take care. Thanks, guys. <laughs> man, that was a good one, Martin. Man, yeah, that, that was, was fun. Man, I want to thank your questions, man. They were. I gotta admit it, man. I, I thought you had great questions. Thank they you, were, thank you. Yeah, I just yeah. asked what I wanted to know, basically. So uh, no, know. I man. I, thank so you. So what I do is, man, for my interviews, man, I might be just tapping into you. <laughs> hey, Martin, what would you ask this person? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> man yeah so uh yeah, that, that was fun that was fun yeah we definitely have to do this we, we definitely have to do this more often me and you um because yeah, yeah. we got one matter of fact we are on together again i i believe next week next tuesday yes right? next tuesday with chris mandigma chris yes who's a if i'm not mistaken a PTK, PTK well, from right? PTTA, uh, the representative, one of the representative of uh, Jared in Canada, and he's also a Tricom instructor. So we're going to touch on that. Under also. Jared, oh, under yeah. Jared, yeah, 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 I know. You know, I'm I'm looking to under Jared too. I think not that I looking to get rank, but Jared does enough stuff to interest me that represent. Just, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, there's just are you are you part of him too? Uh, well, yeah, Sebastian Poirier, he has a big, his his foundation is from um, Tuan Phil in the, yeah. the Dose Metodos, but he's now part uh, also of the uh, PTTA. So he knows the tri -V from the PTTA also and uh, from other. Yeah, I just like, there's, there's enough he does that I just like, 
again, I'm not really so much for the rank, but just, again, there's just enough he does. Like, I love how he incorporates the tactics. Yeah, and, and the way um, it's put in the curriculum of the Petit Thier, it's really mm -hmm. well made. The progression is nice, and it's... Uh, yeah, there's just, it, like, yeah, you know, I'm nice. not... You know, I would never replace PTK with KI. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, but there's enough. There's I know enough what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but it's it's uh, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, and I I, think... I like the emphasis on the practicality. You know. Yeah. No. 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 Like doesn't have the choice being a police officer in and, the SWAT. And I'm not seeing like a huge and I, and this is not bad or wrong. It's not different. I, but I'm not seeing as big of a system. We're just lows information like jared is seemed to really i don't want to say condense because maybe that's not fair but seem to really hone in on just areas of, of importance i'm just from outside looking in without fully knowing well try v is pretty much like that it's really more like it's yeah like, like a yeah, sentence i've always thought it was of a bridge of a bridge system so yeah, to speak yeah you know? yeah 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 um, and with but, the, the new Piketty boxing that he he started, he's incorporating some stuff from Muay Thai. And, it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. And I like, and he does. I don't like the Russian type, but he does the two on one night. Anybody that does two on yeah. one night, you're automatically. Yeah, you yeah I was hearing you speak about the the yeah. tapi 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 yeah, or the. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this the way I learned it with uh, Sebastian. You're never going to do this against a knife if against a knife attack. This is a way to get the two on one or to get the clinch or to get the disarm. Yeah. It's not, you're not doing it indefinitely. You know, I know, it's but just you know a what? Way to get to something. But there's some sanctions that don't, what your guy just said there, right on. Yeah. Some are not adhering to that, though. Yes. They're doing it, it, it as a means of defense. And I'm sorry, you're not. Some, you're, some people are seeing it as a purpose, as a mean of defense, like you just yeah, said. Yeah. But it's supposed to no be words. a way to get something. Yeah. Right. In other words, are you looking, are you trying to, are you looking at defending or are you looking at stopping? Yeah. I want yeah. to stop. Yeah. And I'm exactly. not, I don't want to like get into a, but yeah. that's a whole nother. Uh, hence, the reason why I wrote the article for Angle One. Yeah. Right. And uh, uh, we might talk about that uh, next Tuesday with Chris Mandigma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got oh, we got uh Maestro Ray Floro, Australia, and uh, GM Bobby. Oh, thank you, GM Bobby. And yeah, Mart Martin, Martin made this interview. I mean, his questions were <laughs> thank you, uh, Dan. Uh, Dan, great interview. Thanks, so Yeah, but yeah. So next Tuesday. So um, yeah. oh, you know what? Can you just do just no rush, obviously, but just kind of touch base on when when he would like to do the test. Of run course, of course, and yeah. all that, and just. For flyer purposes, I won't need picks from him until um, he's got like maybe like if I get him Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll send a message to you and him in a common message yeah, yeah, tomorrow or the day after okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. All right. It was right, fun, Dean. Thank you for the Madrid, opportunity. Absolutely. You take care, buddy. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. That wraps up. 246. Man, that was neat. I got the first time to do it with Martin. Uh, we've been. It's been a moderator now for, I don't know, and we never did an episode together. So I'm glad that finally happened. Next episode, this Friday, fingers crossed, all goes well. Uh, first episode in the KI theme. Matter of fact, test run, I think, is going to be Thursday. And the first guest will be GM Mark Wiley and Brandon Ricketts. And it's, I'm just going to keep going. So as long as I can get folks on, I'm going to, you know, and all that. So it's and all that but i'm really excited about this i if anything if you're watching the show I, I hope it has a positive effect as far as uh you know bringing everybody together um and all that so worst games worse i can always look back and say i tried right that's all you can do sometimes but at any rate if you have not already please hit subscribe to fma discussion where all the monies that we receive go to charity we do not keep any of it okay again that's fma discussion on youtube all right, folks, thank you for jumping in, and we'll see you, hopefully, Friday night. All right.